Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game the video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Terror of the Peaks deck, the 5 mana 5 4 Mythic Rare Dragon from M21 with flying, saying spells your opponents cast that target to Terror, costs an additional 3 life to cast. But the part we're most interested in is, whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, Terror of the Peak deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target, so if we can untap with our dragon, it can potentially deal a ton of damage. And to help us combo with the Terror of the Peaks, we're also playing the full playset of Genesis Ultimatum, the 7 mana sorcery, that lets us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, and we can put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into our hand. So if we get very lucky, we could hit a copy of Terror of the Peaks, and then alongside it a very large creature to trigger the dragon right away. And if we're very lucky, it can even lead to an instant kill, where we deal enough damage to kill our opponent on the spot. And we've got a few extra cards to help us uh, enable that. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we're a pretty typical ramp deck, so you'll see a lot of the usual suspects with a few interesting twists. So at one mana we've got three copies of our Boreal Grazer to put an additional land in play. Didn't want the full four copies, since any additional copies we draw along the way are usually pretty bad, but the first copy is quite good. Then at two mana we've got the full play set of Gross Spiral to draw a card and put an additional land in play and then the full playset of Paradise Druid, which can help us ramp and fix our colors, and also puts a 2-1 creature in play, which will still trigger our Terror of the Peaks, and deal 2 damage, so that can still help us take out a small utility creature or finish off a Planeswalker. And then at 3 mana, of course, the main combo with Terror of the Peaks is just playing Uro, which will help us ramp, draw cards, and uh, gain a bit of life. But if we have a Terror of the Peaks in play, also deals 6 damage to any target, even if we're not escaping it. And then when we escape it, deals 6 damage once again. So that's a pretty natural inclusion in this deck. And then Beanstalk Giant is the other one, which will help us ramp with the Fertile Footsteps Adventure, searching up any basic land and putting it on the battlefield untapped. But then if we do cast a Genesis Ultimatum, we could find a copy of Terror of the Peaks alongside a Beanstalk Giant, at which point we will get the creature half, so the 7 mana Star Star, where Beanstalk's Giant's power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control. So if we have a lot of lands in play, this could just one-hit KO the opponent, thanks to the trigger from Terror of the Peaks. And then at uh, 5 mana we've got our Dragon alongside Cavalier of Thorns, which is also great at enabling Uro, as it will mill the top 5 cards of our library, as well as putting an additional line in play, so also helps us ramp towards our Genesis Ultimatum. And then a 5-6 Reach is also not too bad, deals 5 damage with Terror of the Peaks, and when a Cavalier dies we can exile it and put a card from our graveyard on top of our library, so we can maybe find an additional Terror of the Peaks or additional Genesis Ultimatum that got milled. And then at the top of our curve we also have two copies of Fire Emancipation, the 6 mana Mythic Rare Enchantment, saying if a source we control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage to that permanent or player instead. So that will also triple the damage dealt by the Terror of the Peaks ability, so that can definitely lead to some one-hit KOs if we get very lucky with Genesis Ultimatum and find a copy of Emancipation, Terror of the Peaks and any of our big creatures. And then, of course, we've got our four copies of a Genesis Ultimatum. And then the mana base, we've got 27 lands total to make sure we have enough lands to put in play with our Uro, Grow Spiral, and Terboreal Grazers. We've got one copy of Castle Ventress as an additional mana sink to help us scry two islands, two mountains, and four forests. We do want quite a few basics to search up with our Beanstalk Giant as well. Two copies of Castle Garenbrick, which is not super useful in this deck, but every now and then we can use it to hard cast a Beanstalk Giant a turn sooner. And then we've got all 12 Shocklands with Steam Vent, Stomping Ground, and Breeding Pool, and the full four copies of Kentria Triome. It is pretty important to have a lot of dual lands in this deck, since we don't have the easiest color requirements. We need triple green for Cavalier, triple red for Emancipation, and then triple blue, double green, double red for Genesis Ultimatum. So if we had a mana base with Fabled Passage and more basic lands, even though it helps us enable Uro by putting more cards in the graveyard, it might be tricky to cast all these triple colored spells in time. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, fine opening hands. Turn 2 Growth Spiral, turn 3 Fertile Footsteps, turn 4 Cavalier.
facing Sultai. They might have their own Gross Spiral here. I might get a mountain here, actually. So I have triple reds. We already have triple blue, triple green. Yeah. So our opponent could be playing Casualties of War, which is pretty effective against her Emancipation, so that's probably not a great card for us to draw in this matchup. For now we can Cavalier. And we put an Ura in the Graveyard, so that's nice. And if they kill my Cavalier, I can uh, get a Genesis Ultimatum back. One's got their own Cavalier, so very similar game plans so far. See Extinction Event as well, which can be effective naming odds, getting rid of Cavalier and Dragon. Alright, so do we want to Scry here? Don't think so. Draw another Uro. So I could just play Beanstalk Giants, or I could Scry with Castle and then play an Uro, or I guess I can Scry end of turn. Yeah, let's just play Uro for now. Could also escape Uro. Or draw Genesis Ultimatum. Which I don't quite get to cast, but next turn we might be able to. Nessa who shakes the worlds. Let's try and find some dragons, shall we? No dragons, but a cavalier. And a backup ultimatum for next turn. I'll decline to put try and play, we might be better off drawing with it. And then, does Uro attack? Sure. If our opponent gets back Extinction Event, how bad is it? It's not a disaster. Pass a turn. So that names odds, gets rid of all creatures. They probably wanted to attack with their Uro first. And then, um, yeah, that happens. I guess if they attacked with Uro, I could have put an additional card on top of my deck. 
but my graveyard's not too interesting. There's a Hydroid Crisis. Now I could use my castle first to set up my ultimatum. That's probably worth it, actually. Do I have enough mana to cast a Beanstalk Giant afterwards? Let's see. Six? I guess I do. So if I do hit a Terror of the Peaks, I could play Beanstalk Giant afterwards, which is actually a pretty big game. Alright, and there's a dragon. So how many lands do we have in play? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Points at 23. This deals 7. Yeah, let's just go face. Another Uro. Can use a castle here. And that's 16 to the face. And Terror of the Peaks busts Nissa and Hydroid Crisis. Feels good. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a great hand. Grazer into all the ramp we want. Just need to eventually hit a payoff card. But of course, Uro and Beanstalk Giants will eventually turn into win conditions as well. Opponent on blue white. So it could be a control deck. Alright, never mind. Blue white flyers. So having the turn one grazers especially useful. Got a couple options. I think I like Grow Spiral into Paradise Druid here. And then Cavalier of Thorns, another great card against the flying deck. Take three. No land, sadly. But we did mill an Uro, which we can escape. So our opponent needs like a one mana flyer plus a rally of wings. All right, Brazen Borrower can uh, let them attack here. Take four. Probably still better to replay Cavalier than it is to escape Uro. If they attack with all, probably implies a rally of wings. Not a brazen border. Alright. Six. Is it time to chump the sky cats? If we find a land with Cavalier, we can also play Uro. Alright, so we should be safe. I guess we don't have that many red sources yet. Ok, 
can even play the Beanstalk first if I want to. Scan cats. Ah, so let's get in there with Uro. play Beanstalk Giant or I can adventure and then uh, play one. Three reach creatures, 21 life. So I might even be able to survive a rally of wings at this point. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Some ramp into a Genesis Ultimatum, hopefully. Facing presumably a mono red deck. Has to be the Cavalcade variety if we're seeing Weaselback, although it is a knight and it did just get pumped by Fervent Champion, so. And yeah, there we see the Chandra Spitfire, so definitely pointing towards Cavalcade. Do they have land 3 for Spitfire? They do. So if they have a Cavalcade in hand, we are gonna be toast. Probably gotta block the weasel cap here. And there's a cavalcade. And another 1 mana haste creature, so the Spitfire is gonna deal a ton of damage. 12, yeah. Even if I top deck a Cavalier of Thorns, it's gonna cost me 2 life to put in play, so we'll still be dead. So I don't think we have any outs, maybe our Boreal Grazer after I Uro here. No grazer. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Some uh, cheap ramp into Cavalier, which sets up Ultimatum. And maybe Mills and Uro along the way. Yeah, I think I still play Paradise Druid. And then if we draw land, we can Cavalier. If not, we can Uro. Alright, Symbiote. Opponent's mutating. We'll have to wait a bit on this fourth land.
There it is. Castle versus Triome. Uh, I guess I do already have triple blue if we count Paradise Druids. So maybe Castle's more useful. And then we just want to keep ramping. Now, I might play Emancipation before playing Ultimatum, although the fact that my opponent's playing as a Symbiote could imply that they have Gem Racers in their deck, which makes playing an enchantment a pretty sketchy proposition. But if we do play Emancipation first, there's a higher chance we can one-hit KO if we hit a Dragon. So it might be worth the risk. In the meantime, a 9-10 Yorvo that transformed into a Spider. So, how greedy do we get here with this Emancipation? Yeah, might be a little too greedy. Let's just ultimate him two turns in a row. Alright, we would have hit Terror plus Beanstalk. So I get to deal 8 damage. I probably should have considered playing my land first in case we hit a Beanstalk Giant plus Terror here. So not quite enough to kill Yorvo, even if we did play land first. Yeah, we'll just take out Paradise Druids. And stay back, and then next turn I can play Emancipation and Smash. So Yorvo would be able to block Terror of the Peaks, but if we have Emancipation in play, it would just be a trade. We've got some options. There's also Uro. Let's see, I can Emancipation, Escape Uro. Yeah, that's got to be the play here. And then I get to take out Yorvo with the Uro trigger dealing 18 damage. And my opponent has to chum block all of my creatures. Still takes 15. Not bad. Can ultimate them next turn if they let us. And maybe hit some more creatures. Alright. I guess we'll have to settle for a single ultimatum. On to the next one. On the draw. This hand could use an extra land or two. But I don't think I can mulligan. Turn one Pelt Collector, always scary. Opponent on Gruul. I'm fine trading for Pelt Collector given the chance here.
lands are good. Alright, so if we can find a land for Cavalier next turn, that also sets up the escape on Uro and also sets up our ultimatum. So that would be great. Otherwise, we can uh, Uro again and then if we find land afterwards, still spiral. Could see a questing beast here. And they didn't have a great turn 3, so the chances of them having Embercleave in hand are pretty high. And Embercleave plus Questing Beast is gonna be 10 damage of Death Touch plus Trample, which means at least 9 damage is getting through. It's gonna be a Domri's Ambush instead. And do I want to put anything on top? If I put Steam Vents on top, I'm guaranteed Genesis Ultimatum. Maybe that's my best bet. Yeah, I think so. And then just hope to get lucky with Ultimatum. I'm dead to a stomp from Bone Crusher though. Alright, they're gonna play Pelt Collector instead. Let's hope for the best. Alright, not the best. But I guess I'm technically not dead on board. Unless they can play Creature to pump Pelt Collector. Or have any burn spell or pump spell. Alright, that wasn't so difficult. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yorion Sky Nomad deck. We've got a fine keeper. A bit light on green mana perhaps to cast Cavalier, but Beanstalk can find an additional forest. If we find an untapped green source, I'll probably jam Cavalier. If not, we can Paradise plus Spiral. Alright, opponent on Jeskai. Thirst for Meaning. So they seem to be playing quite a few enchantments. Maybe they're still playing the Luka plus a bunch of tokens to get a finisher. Might be Dream Trawler instead of Agent of Treachery. Archon of Sun's Grace, not a payoff for all these enchantments. Alright, there's Star of the Peaks. So pretty high likelihood of my Star of the Peaks not getting to survive an entire turn cycle. It's probably going to get exiled by an Elspeth Conqueror's death or bounced by a Teferi. So I think I should still Cavalier first and then maybe we can combine a Beanstalk with Terror of the Peaks instead. Do have an Uro in the graveyard that we're close to escaping.
opponent passes. So if I can get one more card in my graveyard, I could play Terror and escape Uro in the same turn, which would be pretty sweet. So I think I might even attack with my Paradise Druid here, as strange as it may sound. Opponent probably takes it, but if they don't, it sets up my play. Alright, they're gonna make a Pegasus and then probably trade for it with a 2-2. Afraid of a burnt spell finishing off Arkan. That also works. So if I get to untap with Terror, probably just play Beanstalk Giant dealing 10 damage. If something happens to it, I might scry or I might scry before we draw with Uro after our draw step. But uh, safe to put a stop on upkeep just in case. Putin puts Yorion in hand and passes the turn, so just take our draw step. Another Cavalier. How much mana do we have? 5 plus another 5 is 10. So if I find the green castle with Cavalier, I should still be able to play my Beanstalk afterwards. There's two of them in the deck. So it's not super likely, but it's not impossible. And I could also find a land with Uro. So, play Cavalier killing a Pegasus, and then we'll attack, and then we'll see what happens. Although they might have another Omen of the Forge to finish off Terror by blocking with a 2-2 first. But we'll see what happens first when we play Cavalier. Alright, there's a castle. So I guess now if I just play Beanstalk and kill the Pegasus, I can attack for 16. They might have the White Omen to chum block. Could have also gone face here, which was tempting. But we still have lethal if they don't have anything, and this way it's more likely that Terror of the Peak survived. Alright, Omen of the Sun and chump chump. Hopefully no Shadow of the Sky. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Yorion even flickering all those omens, not enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. And let's see what we're up against. Hallowed Fountain. And a turn to Grow Spiral facing a band deck. So this is probably the band Ram deck with Nissas and Teferis and Ugin, which is pretty hard to beat once it's in play. So we'll spiral and see what we draw. I'm fine attacking now since I don't need Paradise Road to play my Terror of the Peaks next turn. No more games. Don't worry, I got this. Opponent still pluses, so we'll attack. They probably shatter if they have one. Although they might also Shark Typhoon, I guess. Ah! 
Well, if they have Shatter, they can get us pretty good here, but we've got Terror of the Peaks for days, so I'll still run it out there. Alright. That play pays off if we have a creature, and doesn't pay off if we just play another ramp spell there. I've got it. Kinda wanna just ramp into Genesis Ultimatum. Playing Terror and getting it bounced by the Ferry doesn't seem like a good time. Get a red source for Emancipation. Opponent does nothing. Here goes nothing. And there's Nissa. Sadly, we only have one Terror of the Peaks left in the deck, so we're not very likely to find it with Ultimatum. But it is likely to ramp us at least, which makes it easier to play Terror of the Peaks alongside something else in the same turn. I could have gotten the Shocklands to cast Grow Spiral there instead. Might have been better. Well, if they had Ugin in hand, they could have cast it already, so they might not. It's gonna be a Jolrile instead. Alright, so what are we doing? 6, 9, 10, 11 mana potentially. Could do a lot of different things. Can play Terror of the Peaks into. Don't quite have enough for Terror of the Peaks into Genesis Ultimatum, which would be the dream here. Cavalier, if I find a land and I shock myself, I can still Ultimatum. I think that might be the play then. Alright, we'll gain a bit of life at least. Don't think it's worth it to shock myself. If we get to untap, we can definitely do some damage with this emancipation. Protect you. All right, looks like we might get to do our thing. And getting the second copy of Emancipation in play does stack with the first one, so we would be dealing nine times as much damage instead of three times as much. But we can also just play two dragons and then escape an Uro, deal 15 damage with the second dragon, and then 36 damage by escaping Uro with two dragons in play. So that should also be good enough. So that's 15 damage. And this is another 36. All right, sweet, and our opponent packs it in. So we managed to beat the Boogeyman of Standard, the Band Planeswalker deck. Although if they did have an Ugin to follow up Nissa, we probably still lose that game. All right, sweet. So we got to see our Teamer ramp deck with Terror of the Peaks in uh, multiple matchups. I think we're an underdog against most aggressive decks, especially for on the draw. So don't expect to win those games very often. But against slower, more mid-rangey and even control decks, we stand a decent chance thanks to the recursion from Uro, thanks to Cavalier of Thorns providing a nice ETB effect, and then uh, Terror of the Peaks, a nice way to close out the game if there's ever a board stall. 
Now is Terror of the Peaks better than just putting Ugin the Spirit Dragon in the deck? Maybe not, but it's definitely more fun, I would say. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.